Top 5 Friday tonight. So this isn't actually going to be a Top 5 Friday. It's going to be a Top 10 Friday. I'm going to do my Top 10 bands slash musical acts slash artists. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because it's hard to narrow it down to 5. So I'll do 10. And this isn't going to be an edited video because this is a vlog channel. So I'm going to stick to just quick easy vlogs. And this is not anything that would ever go well on the main channel. So I'm just going to stick it. Stick it. I'm going to keep it to this channel. Uh, one thing about me, uh, my, I'm not a huge music guy. I never was a huge music guy. Uh, I didn't really start even getting into music, listening to music, until I was probably 14 years old. I just didn't. It was never anything that really interests me. And then my friends started listening to Pearl Jam and Nirvana and s stuff like that. So I started getting into it, listening to 97 One The Eagle, and that's when I started learning about different bands and stuff, and I got into some some of them. So I'm going to go over that now. I mean, and my musical taste changed drastically. I was just strictly alternative, that BS, which I barely even listen to anymore. Uh, and it moved on to other stuff. Uh, and I'm very eclectic in what I listen to. Uh, I listen Like when I'm editing, I love listening to like jazz and uh, orchestrated soundtracks. That, that stimulate my brain waves. I, I like stuff like that, but I'm not going to have that kind of stuff on this list. This is strictly sort of like bands and acts. Uh, classical music, I, I just, I like it and I listen to it. Jazz, I like it and I listen to it, but I couldn't tell you like who this artist is or anything like that. It's just jazz, right? So keep that in mind. The stuff that I'm listening that I'm, that I'm listening right now, it's not always the stuff that I'll, I'll listen to. But these are the bands that I will keep coming back and listening to uh, again and again and again. So I guess in no particular order, although the top three or four are definitely the top three or four. I guess it's on my nose. Sure do. <laughs> Grease. Anyway. Uh, number ten. Number 10, uh, I would have to say, would be the Beach Boys. How could you not like the Beach Boys? It's The Beach Boys just get me in a good mood. They're just... I would say I put them on, like, just above, like, the Monkees in terms of my favorite... And the Beatles in terms of my favorite oldies. Uh, but definitely on top. And I, I don't know what it is about them. I, I, me and my dad, my dad would listen to them constantly when we were out in the garage working. So that's probably a reason why I grew into liking it and was liking them as well. And it's just feel good music. That's, that's all I can really say about it. Number nine, I'm going to give to Faith No More. I could seriously listen to The Real Thing, Angel Dust, Fool for a Lifetime. I could listen to those albums again and again and never get sick of them. Uh, it's just that perfect mix of aggression and and melody and funk that it just appeals to me and it always has it just it, it it's really it's, it's driving for me like I, I I listen to a lot of faith no more when I'm working out when I was wearing head head buds I don't anymore but I I absolutely love this band and I'm actually, I'm actually a, a fan of Mike, Mike Patton so like I know side projects like Dillinger is escape Pamp, escape plan <laughs> Mr. Bungle I like that I like that stuff because I really he's probably 1A to one someone else 1B my favorite vocalist of all time my patent is amazing coming in at number 8 I would say Pink Floyd I when I first heard first heard Pink Floyd when I was getting into when I was listening to that alternative music, I, I didn't. It wasn't. I didn't get it. It was like okay, well these long drawn out songs and it sounds old. But the more I listened to it, the more it really grew on me. And comfortably numb is probably one of my top five songs of all time of any band. I seriously just get sucked into that song, and it's just I mean like I'm in like in another world. Um, Dark Side of the Moon, how could you not like that? It's an entire album. It's just one song, pretty much. And it's... When it comes to Pink Floyd, like, the early, super early stuff, I heard, I'm not really huge into, and I'm definitely not huge into, like, the newer stuff, like the final cut and stuff like that. But the the, the mid-catalog is some of the best music 
ever created by a human being, human beings. And learning to fly is something like another song, one of my favorites I could listen to again and again and again. Um, so Pink Floyd uh, is is a, it's absolutely perfect for my top 10 list because I'm constantly, constantly listening to Pink Floyd. Number seven, I think we're at seven. Uh, number seven, I'm going to say, is Metallica. And, you know, some of their albums are hit or miss. Focus. Focus. Some of their albums are hit or miss. Uh, but I've always just been a fan. <laughs> like, I... I was when I was listening to like Nirvana and stuff. This when Metallica song would come in, come on to the um, the radio, I'd stop and like, wow, what is this? It's really hard and evil. And now I listen to it and really like it. And uh, I've always always liked it. Um, Master of Puppets can't go wrong. Like the whole album's a masterpiece. Um, a lot of people stop and say that the Black album isn't great, but that's the first album I ever heard was the Black album. And I mean, I don't care what anybody says. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. It's got amazing stuff on it. Yeah. More commercial, uh, stuff, but I mean, that doesn't mean that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, load and reload actually, I think are kind of underrated in my opinion. Now, when they first came out, people were just blasting them, like not blasting them in a good way like on the radio, but saying that they sucked a lot, a lot. Like all my friends said that they sucked. And I was like, yeah, okay. But I still got them. And I, and I actually, to this day, I, I think they're very underrated. They're, they, there's some good stuff in there. Hero of the Day, Bleeding Me, uh, Low Man's Lyric. There's some good songs on those albums. And I think they really, really get overlooked. Uh, and And Justice for All was the second CD that I ever bought. The first being off of a friend in art class in I think the 10th grade and that was Errol Smith's Pump for whatever reason. <laughs> but yeah, uh, second second album, uh, second CD of all time that I bought, all time that I bought was uh, And Justice For All and it remains one, you know, one of my favorite albums. Okay, so this next one's gonna be different. Uh, number six, now, I'm not a big rap fan, never have been. There are some stuff that I like. I like Ice Cube, I like Dr. Dre. Uh, no, it's not Eminem, cannot stand Eminem. His stuff all sounds the same to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but it sounds all the same. This is like, this is Eminem. This is every Eminem song right here. This is. Just gets angrier throughout the entire song. That's it. You've you've heard every Eminem song. Granted, my rapping sucks, but you you get it. You get the idea. Anyway, what this is number six? Bone Thugs in Harmony. I mean, I may not like rap, but their songs. They're just, they, t they seem to me like they take more talent than your standard rap music. There's melodies, there's harmonies, there's, there's, it's, 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 it's pleasant to listen to other than just a guy screaming into a mic. And yeah, they have some hard stuff and I like their hard stuff. And I like, you know, everybody, when, when everyone thinks about Bone Thugs and Harmony, they think about first of the month. And Crossroads. That's pretty much all they ever heard. They got so many more good songs. So over their entire catalog of, of, of like over, see at this point it's almost 30 years I think. Maybe it's like 20, 20, 25 maybe. But these guys are talented and they're pumping out some really, really good songs that never get really any airplay. And so if you like those two songs and you're a fan of them, Check out their other stuff because honestly, while I do like those songs, I like most. I like their other stuff on their albums just as much, if not more. Uh, not another R R I P song is like a staple, and when I listen to it, uh, Ghetto Cowboy is a staple I listen to. Um, can you handle the vibe? I mean, just every there's 
so many good songs. Like I could probably do a top 20 of, of Bone Thug songs. So that is definitely going to be number six on my list. Prog rock probably is my favorite genre. Genre. This is the one I probably listen to the most. It's, and there's so, so, so many subgenres too. But it, it, to me, it's rock music on, at a higher level. It's, it's, it's like rock music crossed with, with, with jazz and classical music. And, and I know that's not a great analogy, but it's just, it's more, it's got more substance, more depth to it. And, and, and it's just, it, it makes me, it makes me want to listen to it a lot more than just a standard song that verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. It's, it's more complex and I like, like the complexity of it. Uh, so number five goes to Shadow Gallery. A lot of you have probably never even heard of this band. Probably, probably most of you. But it is absolutely... When I first heard it, and I just bought the CD on a, on a whim at, I think it was Incredible Universe. And I took it home and I immediately fell in love with it. It was the first, it was carved in stone. And for a lot of people, it's going to be a, a very drastic different. It's going to be drastic from, from your standard rock music that you usually listen to. And it might be a little bit off-putting. But once you... Like, I think a lot of people, once you start listening to it again, and, and it really starts to grow on you. And that's kind of how a lot of it did before I got into Shadow Gallery. But once I got into Shadow, got that CD, I kind of knew what I was getting into with prog music. And I really, really loved it. Uh, I super, super enjoyed it. It's like being on a cosmic journey. And unfortunately, the... In the what's really cool about this this band is it's just a bunch of it's just a group of dudes they don't go on tours they're, they're not huge because they don't produce music that's radio friendly it's just a group of guys who do it because they love doing it I mean they're they one's a music teacher one it's just not their main thing in life but they somehow turned their hobby and passion into into some of the best music I've ever heard, in my opinion. And what really sucks, though, is the, the focus. Come on. It's the lead singer, Mike Baker, uh, died probably 18 years ago. ago. So the, the singer that they had got to replace him to do one album. It wasn't as good. But uh, Carved in Stone and Tyranny are two of the best albums I've ever heard. So if you're, and a lot of these bands, you know, you just, you can go on YouTube and see samples of them. But I would recommend those two. All right, number four, you knew this was gonna be on the list sooner or later, probably. That's typo negative. I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge goth dude. Like I'm not, like I, I'm not a goth, kind of guy but this music just i like it so much and I, I i think it's just because it's i like melody i think that's what it is i like melody and they and they're and they're very he's um peter still was very good at it 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 his 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 singing and not just you know it, it, he was very melodic with his singing, and I, I, I like that, and, and that's something that really draws me to um, a particular act. And I just like the way they have a very distinct sound in their guitars. And they, well, they just have a very distinct sound, period. And so I don't I haven't listened to a whole lot of you know goth music, I guess, but. This is definitely probably one of those bands that transcends that for me, just like Bone Thugs transcends rap, even though I'm not, I'm not really huge into the genre. Uh, but Bloody Kisses and uh, October Rush being my two favorite albums. Uh, World Coming Down, it's got some good stuff. Dead Again, uh, it's, it's just got an amazing catalog. All right, we're down to number three. Number three, the top three, I had a little more difficulty 
figuring out which order I wanted to put them all in. Put them in. I mean, these these bands I keep going back to again and again and again and again and listen to. But I would have to say number three, which used to be my number one. I, if somebody had asked me what's my favorite band, I probably would have said this. But it changes. The top three alternates. Uh, number three, Dream Theater. Uh, Dream Theater is a progressive metal band. They've been around since, well, they've been around since like 88, 89, I think. But I didn't discover them until probably 93, 94, maybe a little bit later than that. But once I did, I was immediately hooked. Boom, pull me under what got played on the radio. And I was like, wow, this sounds awesome. This is different than a lot of the stuff that's being played on the radio. And so I went and got the album, not knowing what any other other stuff sounded like. And... And I was always worried about that. Like, you know, when you get an album, it's not like today, right? So today you can get samples, go on YouTube and hear what things sound like. Back then, one song played on the radio, you're like, okay, I'm going to get the album. And there's a good chance that all the other ones sucked and you just wasted your money. That happened to me a lot of times. So I was very worried when the this album, when I put it in the CD player and the first song was pulling me out of the song I'd, I'd known about. And then Another Day popped on after that and I was like holy crap this sounds great too it's different it, and, and I like that I like it when I love it when bands have different sound they have the you know you have that style you have that sound but you can alternate it and you have different different sounds you have different styles that not necessarily different styles I guess what I'm saying is different types of songs they don't all sound the same and that's what and that's one thing that is really going to make me fall in love with a band if they if they have a wide range of different styles that they can play and and make songs and not just sound the same cookie cutter every freaking song on an album. And that's is this describes this to the T. Yeah, the, there's certain aspects of it that 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 binds all their songs together, and you know you can tell it's a dream theater song, but they don't all sound like cookie cutter copies of each other They're, they they just don't and i immediately fell in love with that album and ever since ever since then i well i got awake after that was the second album and then change of seasons and then once um once that was released like every album that came out after that i was day one purchase and to this day it's still day one purchase because they're still they're still a thing so I think I think a lot of people have heard Dream Theater though. They they it's it's one of those progressive bands that that probably most people have heard of. Uh the next one on my list probably none of you have heard of. Okay, so my next act, my next and I say act because it's different. It's not necessarily a band. And it's going to be hard to explain, so bear with me here. It's a guy his name is, I always have a hard time pronouncing it. He's from the Netherlands. Aaron, Aaron Anthony Lucassen. And his main project, and when I say project, he basically writes all the music, writes all the lyrics. He plays a lot of the guitars, if not most of the guitars. And then he, he sings on some of it, but then he brings in other singers to sing on... On his albums and essentially these singers play different characters now this sounds stupid this sounds weird but it is it works okay this is it's it's almost like every album is a rock opera with all these different singers singing different parts and in my absolute honest opinion this dude's a genius the melodies and the song structures and the, 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 the ideas and the themes that he comes up with are extraordinary. He's, he's very influenced. Influence, <laughs> he's, he's my idol. This dude is... I, 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 I so want to meet him. I so want to go to one of his concerts. But, I mean, they're, always, they're in Europe and, I, you know, that's expensive. His main project, and he's got several projects. His main project is called Arion, and it's a sci-fi story that spans all, 
uh, shit, at this point, I think, like, maybe eight, nine albums. That and each one of these albums tell a different part of the story. Um, that's my personal favorite. Uh, another one, he has several, many different projects. Uh, another one that I really, really like is called Star One Space Metal, where he takes different sci-fi movies and makes songs out of them. So, uh, if you want to get samples on YouTube, uh, just uh, type in Star One. Um, Aaron Anthony Lucassen. Uh, but the Arion project that he does is my favorite. And I don't usually buy CDs anymore. I, in fact, I haven't bought a CD in, hey, at this point, probably 10 years, maybe longer than that. I was I always buy my stuff digital because I just, I mean, I, I have so much stuff as it is, right? So, and I'm just going to put it on like an MP3 player or my computer and help me. It doesn't matter anyway. So digital's fine for music for me. However, in this situation, in this instance, I had to, I had to pick this up because he was autographing the CDs and this is awesome. This is I had to get this. I had to support this dude. Um, because he does not get, in my opinion, the recognition that he deserves. He's a musical genius, but the type of stuff that he makes, you're never going to hear on the radio. You're, it's never going to hit the masses. It's never going to be appreciated by anyone because the radio is too busy playing Mickey Minaj and... Justin Bieber, BS like that, that just gets fed to the masses. Stuff like this that actually takes real talent. He comes up with all this stuff. He makes it all. And he 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 lives in a freaking small home, probably barely scraping by most of his life, making this music that should be heard by the masses, in my opinion. You may not like it, and you mean it's not for everyone, but I think it, it should definitely get out there a lot more than it has. And then... You have people that 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 just get spoon fed to the masses, and they don't even make their own music. They, you, you get these songwriters and producers that make everything, and then just they just they. I mean, it was like that with the Beatles too, but you, you know what I'm saying? It, there's not real talent like this, in my opinion. But I absolutely had to get this. I had to support the dude, and this was a lot more than. Uh, you know, downloading it off of Amazon. This was a, this this cost a lot more, but it was completely worth it in my opinion because the dude deserves it. And I got his autograph. And this, I, I don't know. I'm gonna think I'm gonna put it in a little case or something. But just just check this out. All the just amazing thought that went into this. It's it's a sci-fi story, and all all this art and it kind of it just tells the story. And those are all the different singers. Uh, that's him right there. That's him. But it just, yeah, it just tells the story and it gives a visualization of all the things you actually hear in the music. There's more thought that goes in, that went into this CD than anything like someone like Mickey Minaj has shat out in their entire life. And that's what drives me crazy. People like that, they deserve more, much more than they, what they have. So, I could easily say that he's number one, and really, he, it wouldn't be too far off. But also another band that I have have been love, in love with since I first heard him in the early '90s or late '80s, I should say, is Guns and Roses. Uh, their music speaks to me. I don't even know how to say it. It's just... I don't know what it is. Like, I, I'm very, very bad at describing why I like something. I just like it. Uh, Guns N' Roses. I mean, Axl Rose, his different singing styles. Uh, and they're another band with different, different style songs. You know, you could have just a driving heavy rock song in one minute and then pianos and keyboards the next. And 
they just, I'm very nostalgic about them because I was so fascinated and I was so into them at early nineties. I, I wanted to be Axl Rose. I was like, he was my idol, like in the early nineties. Uh, horrible, horrible idol to have. I do realize that now, but you know, when you're a teenager, it's, you don't think straight, but their music, I just absolutely love and I can, I never get sick of it. I can listen to it all the time. And I really am really, really regretting the fact that I was never able to go to one of their concerts back then. And I missed their concert when they came here. So this was last year. This is sucks. This sucks. I've been waiting over a decade for them to get back together so they could tour, make more music too, but tour. They do, they do it. They get back together finally. You know, hell froze over. And they're going to come to DFW and play in Cowboy Stadium. I'm like, oh, yeah! Let's do this. Let's get some tickets. But then I found out that they just happened to be coming the week that I'm going to Game On Expo last year. Fell on the same exact damn week. I believe that they came like on a Wednesday, but that's when we had to leave to get to Game On. And then I thought the stars aligned because they were going to be playing in L.A., when we were at SoCal Game Expo, which is in close to LA. By the time we actually finished doing what we were doing and got out there to, to LA uh, that evening to try to get tickets, couldn't get tickets. So I struck out twice. I hope they come back, but who knows. One thing I will say though, is that the band was never the same after Izzy left. Izzy was the heart and soul of the band and the person who's just so unsung. Everyone's like Axel and Slash, Axel and Slash. Yeah, it wouldn't be Guns N' Roses without Axel and Slash, but it, it's not Guns N' Roses without Izzy as well, in my opinion. So I'm hoping Izzy returns to the band at at some point. Who knows if that's, if that's gonna happen? They're so dysfunctional. And my dream would be if they all got, to bet, got together Izzy, the main one, Izzy, Duff, Slash, and Axel, and created a new album. That would be absolutely amazing. Because all those iconic guitar riffs that you hear on Guns N' Roses, that's just synonymous. Like, Welcome to the Junk. People think that that's Slash, that's that's Izzy. He had that distinctive guitar sound that that everyone has associated with Guns N' Roses. So... I mean, not that Slash didn't play a significant role, of course. He played lead guitar, you know, his mean-ass solos. But it just doesn't sound like Guns N' Roses without Izzy. It was that combination of Izzy and Slash that just gelled, that created those those sounds that, that, that were just so distinctive. And they were just musical geniuses, in my opinion. They were absolute musical geniuses. They they could write amazing songs. And the only thing that sucks is they, they were just so dysfunctional they couldn't stick they couldn't keep it together. It was once but once they were together, they could come up with some gold. Anyway, uh thank you for watching. I'm gonna throw this at the cat because he's trying to knock over the models that I said that they would be knocking over in the last vlog. See ya. You know what you're not gonna find on top list? Music that's playing in the gym. 95.99% of the music that plays in the gym.